So my name is Suzanne Trowski Tempelhoff. I'm the founder and CEO of BitNation. Um, I started BitNation in July 2014, uh, about mid July, I think. And I, that was after I had been thinking about it and writing about it for about a decade. And uh, before that, uh, I was a military contractor actually, so I spent a lot of time in various war zones and a lot of the work I did was assessing governments, um, basically doing, you know, measuring people's perception on governance, etc. So I assisted in the process of governments being built and government being overthrown. So I saw all aspects of governance, really the good ones, the bad ones, and all the shades in between. And I got a pretty good understanding of what people expect from a government and what a government is supposed to provide and how to do it. Um, then I became an anarchist and I quit uh, the work as a contractor. And uh, I got a book deal to write a book called The Google Momentum, the DIY manual to start your own nation and changing the world, which obviously is what that nation is, with another name. So I was writing on that for, for about uh, two years. In fact, I said I'm writing it on it. Um, and in the process of doing that, I traveled all around the world. I visited uh, groups that were working with Deep Zones, uh, Startup Cities, Seasteads, uh, obviously lots of crypto startups, anarchist communities, all of that. And I got a pretty broad understanding for it. Uh, and then when I started to better understand the blockchain technology, uh, how that could be used as a decentralized public ledger and all the TO protocols that were already built on top of it and actually already functional, I suddenly realized that it would be a lot easier to start a virtual nation providing real governance services than I had previously thought. So I just decided to start it, you know, instead of writing about it. I write about it after the fact, it's um, and, uh, you know, and so BitNation became the world's first virtual nation competing heads on with the nation state through providing uh, the same services, governance services, but in a decentralized, voluntary and borderless fashion, which is also, apart from that, also much more time and cost efficient for its customers. Um, okay, so uh, I grew up in Sweden. Uh, my father was Polish and my mother was French. My father was also a stateless refugee. Um, he was under asylum, so basically he didn't have a passport. Huh? Which, since he was under asylum, you can still live fairly well in a place like Sweden, but it's tremendously inconvenient and uh, uncomfortable for everyone involved. And, you know, so that just made me question the nation state a whole lot. Like, what are these arbitrary borders, you know, drawn, drawn, lines drawn in the sand? Uh, what are they for? What's the purpose? Why do I have different rights uh, than my father or my brother who, who all live in the same country? But yet we have different rights, different laws apply to us just because this piece of paper that I happen to have and they don't. Um, there is obviously no good explanation for that. And so, you know, I started thinking of how to replace the government with maybe, you know, competitive sort of virtual governments uh, that will compete in a non-geographical way. I was thinking initially about it more like global insurance companies that would provide all these services in a sort of, I don't know, maybe coupons, uh, through coupons or uh, to local facilities like local hospitals and whatnot or local security companies. And then that thought sort of evolved over the years and um, I started writing about it, you know, I mean, I, I did a lot of research, you know, there are all these things popping up here and there, <coughs> seasteads, uh, micronations, you name it. Huh? Um, there's been a lot happening in this verse, so there is, it was obvious that it was a following, you know, that there was a public interest for it, and a lot of people are, were talking about post-Vesphalia and what's going to happen, I mean, it's sort of, I think most most people in a certain sphere um, 
assumes that the nation state will end because of globalization essentially because of global communications global transportations uh, global everything uh, yeah so basically we already live in a near post westphalia society but the old governments are still there as a sort of weird bureaucratic elephant we can't get out of the room right so <clears throat> Uh, and I don't know, I think people are attached to the fault of a government because that's what they are used to and I think if you don't have governments it's all going to be chaos. And I don't think so obviously, um, but I wanted to show people that they can get all of the same services but cheaper and better and in a more fair secure way than they can with the current governments and that they can get many different governments or one government or zero governments you know however much they wish and what the sort of government they wish so imagine if we take a comparison for instance um, okay so we're in Sweden right now imagine is if just because we were in Sweden we could only be on LinkedIn but we could not be on Facebook or Reddit or Pinterest or whatever then imagine someone lives in Russia and in Russia people are only allowed to use Facebook yeah? uh, someone so let's say some people are in US so imagine all 320 million Americans are only uh, allowed to use Reddit eh? but not not any other social media platform why would anyone agree to that right that sounds absurd when you think about it that is that is not how humanity operates we are international you know i communicate on facebook with people from across the world every single day you know i probably have daily interactions through likes and comments from people in over 50 countries every day um i'm also a facebook addict you know <laughs> so uh, I, the, the old model is simply extraordinarily outdated and unfair, unjust in so many ways and there is no, no reason to maintain it and it will disappear regardless so why not fast forward it so anyways uh, so I decided to really start it after I understood the blockchain technology because then I knew there was a tool to do it uh, fairly cheap and accessible and functional directly so basically all those things combined yeah yeah I mean so most of what we do is using the blockchain technology at the moment although it's important to know that not all services will be based on the blockchain um, some services will be entirely unrelated to the blockchain for instance some parts of the security services and the diplomacy services are not technology related and it's also important further on to keep in mind that BitNation is first and foremost a governance company not a technology company when it comes to technology we basically assemble all of the best protocols and all of the best teams across the world and we enhance it mm. uh, but we do we write very little original code of our own. Um, where we radically reinvent them is in the governance world. Um, so what I meant by that is producing tools that already exist and that are proven to work. We can radically decentralize the world and, and just make it so that everybody, regardless of where they live, what passport they hold, what preferences they have, what religion, what, what political stance, if they are communists or capitalists or anything in between, can just live with whatever laws, regulations and governance services they tailor for themselves. Oh, there have been lots. I mean, <laughs> it's it's a startup, you know. Uh, if it wasn't, if it was straightforward, it wouldn't be fun, right? Um, you know, when I started, it's funny. When I started, a lot of people told me like, "Oh, but aren't you afraid of governments? You know, how they're gonna react to it and this and that." Actually, uh, I mean, curiously, most people I know who works for the government have come forward telling me like, "Oh, that's actually a brilliant idea. Like, how can we incorporate it?" And the people. 
I have sort of gotten he strangely have are the only ones who have given me problems actually are people who used to work on my team like some people try to sabotage um, that nation they uh, attack the server they close down social media channels channels they slandered me uh, in the media and that nation as well and they bullied or bribed people into leaking and quitting it and so that was really challenging it, it went on for four months and it's still ongoing to some degree you know um, I mean obviously <coughs> The saving grace, of course, is that they are so pathetic and whatever. Like people who only know destruction and sabotage and don't have any original ideas of themselves just want to, you know, spread bad energy around them. Um, it's, you know, you can only feel sorry for them and laugh at them at some point. Huh? So that's it. But it's just annoying to focus on that rather than to focus on growth or, you know, so I would say that was by far the biggest challenge. Um, well, for some people it do feel important. Huh? Um, so uh, for me personally it doesn't. But, but for those who are, you know, it's not going to be recognized as an official document, but of course it's timestamped uh, in a cryptographically secure public letter. So of course in any sort of court matter etc showing that as a record will obviously be better proof than a lot of other things like in comparison people use email to prove stuff or you know people can use a lot of things to prove stuff so obviously from that aspect it will be a very good tool uh, for people who do want some form of government approval. Uh, also it's a question of critical mass adoption right just like Bitcoin. Uh, if two people are using it in their basement, nobody will care when two million, you know, or twenty million are using it. Governments have to care because suddenly it becomes, you know, a part of the society and, and the economy. So now you see, like, all people, uh, all the governments trying to rush around Bitcoin, trying to regulate it here and there, you know, which I, I'm obviously hugely against, and I think it's terrible and wrong, but, but that's what's happening. So. Yeah, it's all a question of mass adoption, really. So, uh, when I started BitNation, I didn't want to incorporate my government back jurisdiction because, uh, you know, we are starting in BitNation to prove to the world that everything that the government do can be done through us on the blockchain. So, I wanted to have a organization on the blockchain. And, again, the technology is all there, right? There are several platforms available today where you can create so-called crypto tokens, um, which basically works as a currency in a sense, as a cryptocurrency in a sense that it becomes shareable, tradable assets uh, that you can put on exchanges and so forth. So this uh, XPNX is corporate equity that is on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. It's a meta token on top of it, so it uses the Bitcoin blockchain to, to trade it. And we have attached dividend payments to to the tokens, uh, so everybody who pays in to this, uh, when when and if we start turning a profit, people will get dividend payments from it. Which is exactly like if you own shares in LLC, for instance, and so forth. Um, I've gotten a fair amount of criticism for not being incorporated, but frankly, if you look historically, generally the people who just do stuff and go their own way, you know, get a lot less trouble than people trying to comply with rules and regulations and get so bogged down by it that they can't actually do anything. Um, like there was a good comparison the other day between Uber and Lyft, the car services, who've been sort of gang ho just doing their own thing, not caring so much about regulation and dealing with them when they had to. And another company based in California um, who are trying to do everything to comply with the government. They went proactively through the government saying we want to work out the legislation with you. And they got so... The, the rules were just overwhelming and they had to shut down the company. They just ran out of money from all the lawyers and all the regulations and it was impossible to operate. Um, I think the blockchain startups right now, um, we are ahead of our time. We are, uh, you know, we are creating history, but which is fantastic, exciting and so forth. But it's also challenging because it's hard to explain to people who don't know 
what the blockchain is. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't even know what Bitcoin is. So taking it a step further can be challenging. Uh, and then obviously it's challenging because a lot of these technologies have not been really tested in practice yet. So there's going to be a lot of trial and error for a long time to come. And uh, we're going to suffer a lot from people saying like, oh, well, this doesn't work perfectly or there's like a kink in this or a problem with that, which there isn't any emerging technology. So we just have to expect that. Huh? The next 10 years will be challenging. Well, it depends how you define a government, right? We call it a nation, and the reason we call it a nation and not a government and not a state is that the typical definition of a nation is people gathering around either a cultural identity uh, or a religious identity or a linguistic identity, etc. Which can also mean sort of people are gathering around an identity of wanting to opt out of the nation state or gathering uh, around an identity of wanting to just have a better technology, right? And uh, to be a government, I mean, what defines a government today, a nation-state government, is basically the use of force, the use of violence. So, let's say, if you don't pay your taxes, they will come and knock at your door and, you know, eventually maybe throw you into a cage. But nation does not do that. We do not enforce any services through the threat of violence. So, um, in all other respects, we provide the same services, but without the visual graphical monopoly and violence. I think that's fantastic. I am a really big fan of that. Um, I haven't used colored coins particularly much. Uh, I did use it for a land title pilot because from what I've seen of colored coins, they seem pretty good to risk their non-currency and non, uh, not non-equity type of assets. And it's very simple and straightforward to use, which I really like. And as you mentioned in our conversation before, you don't need, there is no native currency, you don't need to buy a token to use it, which is also lovely. Uh, there are many other ones that I like as well. I think Mastercoin is now called Omni, uh, have some potential. I think counterparty uh, is uh, okay, you know, depending on what you want to do. Um, Doge party, I never use, but it's Doge, so it can't be too bad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at least it's cute, right? Uh, and then there is Next that I'm a big fan of, and also Horizon, which uh, we are working very closely with. Um, well, first of all, I wouldn't use the word currency. Currency means a means of exchange, right? So, yeah, okay, you can maybe create Amazon currency in the same way you can create loyalty bonds, for instance, uh, or discount bonds, or something like that. But then it's because you pick the token to a actual service or product that that company has. So, uh, but, you know, for actual currency, obviously, Bitcoin is the only one. Um, and, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's a good idea for, like, sort of loyalty bonds and that sort of things. I do dislike how, like, app coins are being used right now, where it's presented as an investment opportunity, because it's, like, a token that's needed in, uh, you know, one product or another and therefore it's presented as an investment opportunity, but in reality it isn't, because it's not attached to dividend payments, and yeah. Well, I think, you know, it's really wrong that we are geographical prisoners, you know, when it comes to choices we want to do in life. You know, we, the two of us, live in the same country, and yet we may not have the same religion and want to follow the same rules. Maybe you, you know, what I know, maybe you are Sharia, you know, and want to follow Sharia law. Uh, I mean, maybe you are Muslim and want to follow Sharia law. Um, maybe I want to follow British common law, you know, and I see absolutely no reason why we shouldn't have that choice, right? Why would this be limited? And beyond that, governments doesn't, don't have any incentives to compete because 
<laughs> you know, they can't, even if there are elections, it's only once every four years. The blocks are generally very similar, the right wing and the left wing is pretty much similar, and even if you do manage to change the government, the ruling party, uh, you still only change like a thin layer at the top of it. All the bureaucrats below, beneath, who are actually running the government are exactly the same people. They don't change. So it's ridiculous. And even if politicians did have incentive, it will still be a terrible system. I mean, democracy is horrible. Democracy is a scam. It's Marlboro. Why should my rights be taken away from me just because I happen to be outnumbered? Huh? There's absolutely no reason for that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so we have an ID and reputation system. And the reputation system will take a little bit more time to build out. Right now it's just very basic. So basically our ID system is based on the use of PGP keys. So basically uh, people have to sign every single transaction, you know, and every document, etc., using your keys, which guarantees that the person is the person he claims to be. And we also have verification systems that are based on social media. So people need to import their social media accounts and like retweet, for instance, this is my Keybase IO, you know, come and support me type of thing. Uh, or the nation ID in this case. Um, and yeah, um, so that's pretty much it. They can use it for any transactions, you know, to sign any transactions. They have to use it, in fact. And people also need to have multiple identities and also anonymous identities. Because, for instance, if you are living in a place like Iran and you're homosexual, for instance, and you will go to jail uh, if that comes out, you still need uh, a secret or multiple identities to do the transactions you need to do with people in your community. So that is very important to us. That's something we will be looking a lot into the future. Yeah, the nation will need anarchy. Anarchy in the sense that it will make the monopolies on violence, the current nation state governments, entirely irrelevant. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it won't lead to statelessness. Huh? Uh, you know, I don't want a world without governments. I think people need and want government services. I want a world of competing governments. You know, hundreds or thousands or millions or even billions of competing governments. Everybody who wants to have a government, a start run government, should be able to do so. Diplomacy and physical security will be hard to do on the blockchain. Uh, I think physical security is sort of self-explanatory. Uh, you know, the blockchain doesn't fight. Although maybe when we can have artificial intelligence uh, that can be run on the blockchain, that may change. Huh? And the technology is developing really fast, so who knows, right? When it comes to uh, diplomacy, you know, again, the blockchain can go and negotiate with a, a government official to get someone out of jail if it's needed. So that have to be humans to do that, obviously. But the blockchain have a role there too because it identifies people and people are held accountable and incentivized to behave well through the, the reputation system. So that goes as well for, for instance, our ambassadors and so forth in, in our worldwide network. Yeah, I mean, the BitNation system is a decentralized P2P client that everybody owns copy of, right? If you choose to download a desktop client, that is. So, and in that, all the communication is encrypted, of course. Um, so you can send messages to whoever that are, you know, encrypted and so forth. And, um, yeah, also when you enter anything on the blockchain, you can choose it to just enter a hash that and only you have a copy of the document and that's fine. You don't need to actually enter, uh, I mean, the whole, too much information that you don't feel comfortable with entering.